I'd like to welcome Dr. Patrick Crowley from Ireland. Welcome, Patrick. Hello, Linda. Could you tell us how you discovered LDN in the first place? I discovered it by reading the Irish Times. They, it's a, a daily newspaper here, and they do a health section every Tuesday. And there was an article in it late in 2004, and it was about LDN and about Dr. Bihari in New York, the neurologist who's in, who was using it at the time. And it was written by Mary Boyle Bradley from Galway. Her husband has MS, and she had gone to see Dr. Bihari, and she wrote this article, and uh, I was very interested in, in it. Uh, being a GP, I, I have a number of patients with MS, of course, and I'm always interested in the treatment of it and also the causation of it even, but it's not. It's something I hadn't heard of before, so I followed it up. I went to New York a few months later, and I met Dr. Bihari mm -hmm. and interviewed him. And that interview was actually filmed by a film crew who made a half an hour documentary of it. And I use that to this day to show patients because it's very informative. It's very well edited and it's very well put together. So it's Dr. Bihari speaking about LDN. And I had researched the questions. Uh, I'd done quite a lot of research before I went to see him. So I find it very useful. And of course, he got sick shortly afterwards. And really uh, wasn't seen it was the last thing he was seen out publicly at so it's I, I i find it very useful and i use it as i say uh, as information and education for patients about ldn how long have you been prescribing ldn for your patients well since since then since about uh, since i read that article i started to get uh, interested in it and i i met i had a doctor friend in cork whose sister was on it it seemed to start in cork uh, that's, I'm not sure exactly what, how the information started coming into Ireland, but there were some people on it in Cork. They were making it up as a liquid and taking it. Uh, they would be uh, taking the Nalorex, which is 50 milligrams of naltrexone, and they'd be <clears throat> dissolving them in water and taking three or four or five milligrams, as Dr. Bihari was recommending for the low-dose treatment. And uh, they were doing very well. And they, they actually featured in the, in, in the film, too. I started to use this, and uh, it was gradually uh, something. I didn't know any other doctor who was using it, so it was trial and error. But uh, in general, the patients had positive effects from it, most of them. So, so I've been using it since. So how many patients would you say you've treated so far? Oh, dear, I'm, I've treated over 100 anyway, 150 nearly, uh, most of them with MS. But increasingly, as the years went by, and I realized its usefulness in autoimmune conditions, so I'm, I'm using it in, in things like lupus, forms of arthritis such as uh, ankylosing spondylitis, rare forms of arthritis which are autoimmune, and things like fibromyalgia, which it has been now shown to be very good in. And so more and more I'm using it in autoimmune conditions. I'm also using it in cancer to try and slow down the rate of progress or to keep uh, cancer from reappearing after people have had treatment. And uh, increasingly that's uh, happening in Ireland that people who, are, who, who want to use it, and we have some dramatic cases in Dublin, which I think you know about uh, a number of people with lung cancer who seem to be doing very well. So I have been using it in any condition that I thought it might be useful. And it, with trial and error, then I have decided if it, and you know, in a lot of these conditions, it has been very useful. So, uh, I mean, I have a number of cases, which, for instance, a 34-year-old girl with lupus who came back practically in a wheelchair from Australia and went to see the rheumatologist here who co confirmed the diagnosis. She was on high dose of steroids and uh, they wanted to put her on methotrexate, which is a pretty heavy drug, probably on it for the rest of your life. So she went on LDN and she got better within weeks and she went back to Australia. And, you know, the rheumatologists are interested in this. They want me to go and talk to them in the, in the local regional hospital, which I haven't done yet, but I'm about to do it. And um, so I find that's positive that they're actually, they can't understand uh, how some of the, you know, they haven't, they're not knowledgeable about LDN. So a number of patients have walked into their clinics, which they've seen 
people with fibromyalgia for a few years and they've just seemed to get better. They've gone in and said to them, you know, I feel good and I don't think I need to come here anymore. And, and they don't know what's happening. So they're <laughs> calling me now, which is which is good. It's it's usually the other way around. Mm -hmm. So so I, I'm, I consider myself quite exper very experienced with abuse of LDN now, you know. So what would you say from your patients and your experience the success rate has been? The success rate... You have to try and determine what exactly you mean by success, but people who get improvements. Uh, now, if I had my way at this stage, I would give people who have a newly diagnosed with MS, I would think that they should have it. Because the treatments of MS for all their high-tech chemical kind of uh, manufacturing, uh, they're still not very good and uh, they're not guaranteed in any way. They can help, and I'm absolutely sure of that by reducing the number of attacks of MS, but they don't seem to halt the progress uh, in, in any real way. And they don't claim to, to be honest, uh, about, about the, the products. I'm talking about the beta ferrons now, Tessabri or any of those that are out there. Uh, so I was looking for something that would slow up the progress. And, uh, you know, I would say 70 to 80% of people get some real benefit. By that, I mean, they get a definite increase in energy. They may, they frequently get improvement of bladder control, and they often get uh, improvement in mobility and muscular uh, kind of coordination. And these are these are big things. Uh, but the problem is uh, patients who've had MS for a long time usually have a fair bit of damage. So you're not going to reverse that damage. But if you can stop the progress, uh, that is great. Uh, but I would think it should be given earlier, just like we give everybody aspirin. I'm on low-dose aspirin because I've got a a cardiac, I had a, a heart operation, and I mean, everybody gets it who has a cardiovascular complaint, and, and everybody agrees it's very good. I, I would have a similar attitude towards low dose naltrexone in, in the case of multiple cirrhosis. Now, not everybody gets benefit. I mean, there are people who don't seem to benefit, and they'll come off it or they don't take it. They, they, but some of these people have been on high dose steroids quite a lot. I, I noticed that. That, 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 that I don't like to hear that, that they've been on it a lot. A lot. Um, but in general, 70 to 80 percent of people will get some improvement. And some people will get quite dramatic improvement, you know. Hmm. So what do you think we can do to help influence the medical profession to prescribe LDN? Good question. It depends on who you're talking about. Ireland is a very small country, 4 million population. We have, we have about 25 neurologists. You see, it's it's a very small community. They regularly meet and et cetera, et cetera. The neurologists in this country, as far as I can gather, and I've known a lot of them over the years, I go to a odd neurological conference, uh, they don't seem to be interested. And they're quite hostile to us. Patients tell me this. Uh, that's okay. Uh, that's, their, that's their position. And if I might say it, I think that's their problem. But... The rheumatologists uh, seem to be very quite interested in it. Uh, of course, you've had some good research done down at Stanford University on fibromyalgia, for instance, and that's been widely reported, and maybe they've picked up on that. I don't know. But I do find that their attitude is different. I have talked to uh, gastroenterologists because Professor Jill Smith in, in, uh, in, in Penn State is using it a lot in Crohn's disease, now, Crohn's disease is a very serious disease, which may end up having major surgery, etc. And it often occurs in young people. And uh, so you need the, you know, I, I can't do that. And I, I don't hand out LDN to people with Crohn's on my own. I want to have an ally uh, as, an, uh, as a, a doctor in the hospital who will be there, you know, uh, maybe a surgeon, uh, maybe a gastroenterologist, preferably a gastroenterologist. And I have got them a little interested, but, you know, they've tried it in one or two cases and the cases ended up in surgery. And so they weren't that impressed. So, you know, that hasn't gone that well. But mm. in MS particularly and um, musculoskeletal conditions and autoimmune conditions, particularly lupus, and I use it in sarcoidosis as well. I, I find that these, you know, the patients tell me, you know, they, they just are better. They're, they're not totally cured but they're better and in some cases like in fibromyalgia there can be dramatically improved but you know i mean how do we get the medical profession 
it, you know, it's probably different in Britain. I mean, you're you're it's a big country with big population, and uh, you know the the logistics of it are different. Well, we're going to have a conference here this year, uh, as you know. I think mm-hmm. in September, seventeen of September in Dublin, and half of the conference will be dedicated to the whole LDN question, and we'll be talking about various aspects of it and bringing in speakers from around the world. And also we'll have a number of speakers from here. Uh, I'll do something on Phil Boyle. will do something on, he uses it in his fertility uh, treatments, uh, you know, and, and very successfully, I might add. We hope to have quite a bit of expertise at that. And hopefully the Irish medical profession will take uh, more notice of it than they have been up to now. There's only a handful of doctors in Ireland who are seriously interested in, uh, in LDN. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us.